Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this video, let's do the full review of this OnePlus 7 Pro. And I have been actually testing this from uh, 11th May onwards. This is a review on it. So it's been 12 days since I've been using this as my primary smartphone. So I'll give you my opinion, what I feel about it. And I have very mixed feeling about this uh, device. These are the pros and equal number of cons that I have. So let's go over this one and uh, I'll go o e over each and every aspect of this device. So this video might be a little bit on the longer side guys but I feel I should give you um, the in-depth review what I feel about this device covering all the important aspects that you need to know before you shell out the money because now the pricing of this one is certainly on the premium side it uh, the base variant uh, that comes with 128 gigabytes of uh, storage and 6 gigabytes of RAM starts at 49,000 and by the way guys this is the review unit this is the higher end uh, unit that comes with 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of uh, storage and if you've seen my unboxing video in terms of space as you can see it looks actually really good part by the Snapdragon 855 SoC and uh, it has a massive screen that is a 6.67 inch other specs are on your screen for your reference so let's break it down between the pros and cons what I feel about it let's start with the pros what I like about it and the first highlighting point about this device is that uh, screen and I feel that's a con also on this one this one has a massive screen it's a 6.67 inch curved uh, screen for example this curved edge uh, you uh, have seen this on the galaxy s8 s9 etc now we have that but i feel uh, they have put unnecessarily really really big screen on this this is almost a 6.7 inch screen and even after about 12 days of usage i still feel it is really really big uh, but again the screen quality is really good uh, finally uh, oneplus for the first time has gone with a quad hd plus uh, display and uh, this one is uh, also capable of going up to 90 90 hertz uh, display you can scale it down to 60 hertz but um, in my testing i noticed that i didn't find a huge difference in terms of battery life moving to the 60 so the screen quality is actually really good and even in outdoor conditions when you keep it on auto brightness it is easily visible so no problems regarding the screen quality but it is really really big now moving to another thing that oneplus has hugely improved and you know, might be knowing this if you have used earlier oneplus devices that never their uh, vibration motor was that effective but they have really changed it on this one and now the haptic feedback that you get uh, on this device is excellent i would say one of the best uh, among android phone i would uh, compare it with the pixel uh, 3xl or the 3a xl which have the best vibration motor among android phones so it's uh, almost close to that so great job i would say and the vibration motor is uh, very well implemented you can even change the intensity now moving to another thing that i like on this device is that fortunately the base uh, storage that you get is 128 gigabytes not 64 so that's actually a good thing and you also get the 256 gigabyte uh, variant now moving to another thing is like uh, like the oneplus 60 this also has that in display fingerprint scanner and it is really really fast on this phone so they have really improved the speed on this uh, so it's a very fast in display fingerprint scanner but sometimes you have to like double tap to wake it up it uh, actually wakes up automatically when you pick up the phone like this but sometimes it doesn't so you have to double tap but when it comes as you can see it's very accurate and very very fast so i personally did not have any issues with the in display fingerprint scanner and in terms of speed i would say it's among the fastest that we have seen till date now moving to another thing that I like with this phone is the earpiece is actually loud and very clear on this phone. So in terms of cellular call quality, I never had a problem. It was a very loud and uh, clear. Now moving to speakerphone also, the speakerphone setup is good. It's actually having a stereo speaker. So I took a lot of calls uh, with the speakerphone also and they were loud and clear. Now let's move to the cellular call quality. Guys, this is different from the uh, earpiece and stuff. I tested this phone here in uh, India with Airtel and uh, Geo. I even traveled a little bit but mostly my testing was in Hyderabad city and Airtel is my primary SIM and Geo is my secondary SIM and in terms of reception I would say uh, the phone is good enough but in very weak areas for example uh, this is my office this is soundproof room and Airtel actually has very low signal with almost every device here and if I take calls here with the Airtel SIM many times it gets disconnected uh, don't get me wrong it's 
it's not bad almost 75 percent of the phones get disconnected but there are some phones like 25 percent what i've tested i could take calls even with the airtel sim that's not the case with this one so in very low a uh, signal area yes uh, the signal reception is just okay not among the best but on geo i got very good results uh, uh, with geo the results were actually really good now moving to the UI, uh, this also runs on Oxygen OS and if you've used any OnePlus device, you know that that's the beauty of uh, OnePlus uh, smartphones, very fluid. That's the same case in the, with this one and it runs out of the box with Android Pie. You don't have to worry about that. And also in update situation, uh, OnePlus has been good. In fact, in the last 12 days of my testing, I already got two OTA updates. And in fact, the last update improved a few of the things uh, uh, that I had in the, my cons, I had to cancel it. So yes, in terms of updates and fluidity, you will have no issues with this one i never had any issues of any lagginess on this uh, device uh, now coming to ram management also there also i did not have any problem with this one uh, excellent ram management apps just reload uh, but again guys i'm testing the 12 gigabyte ram uh, variant so no issues regarding the uh, ram management it has been done very well now coming to another uh, thing is that this uh, phone uh, is the first commercial phone that is available as of now that has the ufs 3.0 storage which is significantly faster than the ufs 2.1 and i think so that is again uh, one more reason whenever i you just click on an app it loads almost instantly uh, doesn't have any delay so that's actually a nice thing indeed it's a very very fast phone in terms of speed you don't have to worry about this one now coming to the charging uh, they have supplied the wrap 30 watt fast charger and i timed it uh, when the phone was at 15 percent i kept it uh, on charge and in about 66 minutes it reached 100 percent so it's uh, nice to see that they have that wrap charging and also i was just charging uh, the phone again was at 15 percent and uh, i i thought to time it out but after eight minutes i had to go out and in eight minutes after eight minutes from 15 it reached 30 uh, percent so it charged about 15 percent in eight minutes so nice to see that they have that wrap charging but guys again beware that if you charge it with any normal charger or even with a qualcomm fast charger the charging will not be fast so you have to be aware uh, carry that uh, wrap charger with you now moving to the processor again it's the qualcomm's flagship processor that we have that's the snapdragon 855 soc on this one and again in terms of performance you don't have to worry about it it's the best as of now from qualcomm so no issues so in that area you are covered and also while playing games you won't have any problems now let's talk about the battery on this one on paper yes the battery is 4000 milliamp hour but again as you notice it also has that very very big screen that's a 6.67 inch uh, screen that we have and with that 90 hertz uh, refresh rate i would say in terms of battery life i could easily uh, get uh, 24 hours worth of battery life and guys i'm using this one with uh, dual sim mode not with a single sim and mostly about, i would say 90 percent of the time i was on mobile data and then also easily i could get about 24 hours of uh, worth of battery life and even about on saturdays and sundays when i don't use the phone on that lot about one and a half days uh, but in terms of screen on time here i would say you will get mixed results with this device the worst that i have seen is about four and a half hours of screen on time and uh, the uh, best that i have seen is about 6.3 hours of screen on time with this one and i would say i got better screen on time when i was using airtel uh, with data uh, when i was using the geo sim as the data uh, then the sot fell about one hour from me so again that is also something that you have to note so the battery life is good but not excellent if you are expecting about two days uh, worth of battery life uh, seven ish hours of screen on time no you won't get that but decent about expect realistic about i would say five to about six hours of screen on time now moving to the camera again if you see uh, this is the first time oneplus is putting that triple camera setup the main camera is a 48 megapixel uh, shooter this is optically stabilized and then we have this uh, 16 megapixel wide angle lens and then we also have a uh, 3x zoom camera which is an 8 megapixel and this is also optically stabilized uh, and uh, i would say in terms of camera samples as you can see if you take camera samples in outdoor good lighting conditions the uh, 48 megapixel uh, sensor is doing a great job in my opinion and the snaps that you get in natural lighting are really good now moving to the wide angle lens i feel uh, it is not that wide compared to many of the other wide angle lens that we have seen in the smartphones but nevertheless it's a good addition in 
in my opinion and lastly we have the 3x zoom which is actually good in zooming but i feel they should have gone with the higher megapixel count because it's just 8 megapixel and if you try to uh, pinch and zoom a little bit then the picture gets fuzzy pretty quickly uh, so in terms of camera performance the camera performance is good i would say and even for portrait mode as you can see it does a good job in terms of skin color but always when you use that portrait mode it's using the 3x uh, zoom so that is also something you have to know moving to the front facing camera it's that uh, pop-up uh, camera that we are getting it's a 16 megapixel pop-up selfie camera and i have to say this time uh, the camera performance is actually good with the front facing camera in fact i've been uh, using a lot of flagships i would say in terms of front facing camera it is much better than even the samsung galaxy s10 plus because with the s10 plus it used to do that artificial skin smoothing quite a bit uh, that's not the case on this one so i prefer the front facing camera on uh, this one but in uh, very low lighting conditions and uh, artificial lighting conditions, I would say the camera performance is pretty average and many of the other smartphones will do better than this one. So these were the pros about this device. Let's move now to the cons and here also I have a really big list guys. So again, let's talk about that. And the first thing is that uh, there is no physical LED notification light on this uh, smartphone. That's okay. And as it's having an AMOLED screen, I thought OnePlus will give the, us this always on display Display, but that's not the case as you can see the display comes up when you wake up and stuff like this move it but again it always on display is not there and i definitely miss it i feel they didn't uh, opt for that because the battery life already is kind of average and if they enable always on the battery life would have tanked so that's uh, one thing uh, that you have to note also i simply do not like the fact that it's such a big device 6.67 inch still they couldn't uh, manage to put a headphone jack on this one and the really sad part is that in the box you don't even get a headphone to uh, dongle and you don't even get what do you say a headset so if you buy this phone make sure you have a usb dongle or a what do you say usb type c headset because if you don't have that you are out of luck it's really silly of oneplus not to give these things in the box considering the price point of this device even samsung actually provides headsets and uh, adapters uh, in their box now let's uh, talk about one more big omission with this device as i've told you uh moving to the camera uh, we have that uh, wide angle lens but for some strange reason you simply cannot shoot video with the wide angle lens which is actually bursting because many of the other smartphones that have that wide angle lens do allow us to actually shoot a video in wide angle but as of now that is not possible on this device i don't know if oneplus will enable it with the future update but as of now you can't shoot video with a wide angle lens now moving to another thing is that as of uh, we are talking about the camera as i've told you the camera is really good in outdoor conditions and the lighting if it's decent but when the lighting falls low and in uh, low lighting conditions like indoor lighting and stuff the camera is really really struggling and I think so oneplus needs to really optimize uh, this one because I have tested other phones with the 48 megapixel sensor that did a lot better in artificial and low lighting conditions compared to this oneplus in fact the way cheaper the oppo f11 that is for just 18,000 uh, uh, that has that 48 megapixel sensor was doing a much better job in indoor and artificial lighting so I really hope with software updates they improve the image quality maybe I should relook the camera after a month or two after it gets a couple of updates but as of now in a pre low lighting and artificial lighting uh, the skin tone and stuff are really uh, not that great on this one now moving to another thing is that they opted for this curved edge screen it looks actually really nice uh, but again i feel uh, it's simply a little bit uh, impractical and also uh, edge detection is not that good uh, so if you're not used to these edge screens many times you'll be doing accidental taps and i hope with software updates uh, they minimize it even samsung phones like the s8 s9 s10 have that edge screen but uh, sam on the samsung devices you don't get those accidental touches because they have been making this for almost four years now so i hope with software update uh, they minimize the accidental uh, curve touches that uh, you might have uh, noticed if you're using this device so that's another thing and uh, this is the biggest con that i have with this device is that screen 6.67 inch 
a screen is just just too much and also because of that the weight balance of this phone is simply not that great it just feels too heavy and top heavy even after 12 days i'm feeling that the phone is a little bit on the heavier side uh, so the weight balance has not been done well on this so again i don't know uh, if you're planning to buy this device definitely go to a store like Reliance Digital etc and handle this phone for five minutes and see if you like the weight because uh, many of my friends actually saw this device they liked it but when they held it and played it around two minutes uh, most of them said that isn't this phone too heavy so again beware of uh, that also moving to the stereo speakers finally oneplus has put stereo speakers on this one and that's a great move but if we compare the stereo speakers quality with the flagships like the iphone 10 uh, even s10 plus or even the pixel 3 xl i would say uh, they are not as great as those phones for example in terms of depth and stereo separation they are not that good uh, and also in terms of volume loudness i would say again the pixel and even the iphone 10s 10s max do a much better job so yes good to see stereo speakers are there but again it's simply not among the best now moving to another uh, con that i have regarding the camera is that and this can be a big factor whenever you uh, we have that portrait mode that's actually good uh, and many people use the portrait mode when you're taking photographs but what happens uh, when you take the portrait and use the portrait mode on this one is always zooms in that 3x so if you are in a close environment like this you simply cannot use the portrait mode because if you zoom in it'll just zoom into your like uh, nose on something like that so i hope uh, with a software update they enable uh, the portrait mode to be used uh, not only with just the 3x zoom camera but also with the other ones and they can definitely do the depth using the ultra wide lens so i hope they implement that uh, uh, with the future update because many times uh, when i was in the restaurant and stuff i simply couldn't use the portrait mode because it's just zooming in too much and uh, lastly is again you know about this no ip protection on this one and also no wireless charging is there on this one which is something that you would expect because it's almost costing about 50,000. So, but those things are simply not there on this one. And now moving to the critical part, many of you keep asking me about, is it value for money? And here I would say, uh, no, it's a great device. It's a very fast device. I would say apart from the cons, what I have mentioned, but uh, considering the price point, the price gap, the regular OnePlus 7 will be available for what 33,000 and this is what 50, uh, 49,000 so the price gap of almost 16,000 is difficult to justify yes you are getting some things that are better for example you're getting that 6.6 uh, uh, 7 inch screen with 90 hertz uh, display if you really like big screens yes you can go with it but i feel for most users it's just too big and also that haptic feedback is really improved on this one and you are in terms of camera you're getting the 3x zoom camera and the ultra wide camera compared to the one plus n but in other aspects even the one plus seven at the 33,000 price point is way met better in terms of value proposition compared to this one so that sums uh, up the review of this one and if i have to bring the major cons that i do not like with this device is that size and the weight is something you have to be really careful uh, because uh, before you buy this device just go to a store and handle it and see because many of the users uh, in my family uh, when they use this device they always said that it's just too heavy anyways guys this was my in-depth review for this oneplus 7 pro do let me know what do you think about this one and i, I frankly feel uh, with future uh, software updates i hope oneplus improves the camera and some of the things that i've mentioned regarding the portrait mode and stuff they fix it with the ota update anyways guys what do you think about this oneplus 7 uh, pro do let me know in the comment section below that's it for now thanks for watching this is ranjit and i hope to see you in my next video take care guys